Hi. I wanted to uh, give an explanation of the first essential question one of uh, spring of 2012. So um, let's go ahead and uh, start off with uh, the example supposed to be a, a pineapple farm. And you'll notice that sometimes in this class the examples are kind of bizarre. Um, but the uh, first question that we're going to deal with is what to do if you take out a loan to have some extra cash on hand. So this is one of the, um, the very common kind of examples that we'll have. Essentially what happens is, is that when you take out the loan, you get some cash. So what you have is an increase in some assets that are right there. And that balance sheet always has to balance. And so at the same time, you're seeing a increase in your liabilities that's right there. So please note that you know the loan was you know, $100,000. You have assets that went up, but at the same time, it balances because liabilities plus owner equity are supposed to equal to the assets. Now, there's also this connection between the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. In this case, what we've got going on is some um, borrowing and lending. And so there's going to be this echo from the balance sheet into the finance section on um, liability, uh, sorry, on cash flow. And so what you're seeing is because there's this increase in cash, you're going to see an increase in cash from finance over there. So that's taken care of our uh, additional cash on hand from the loan that we're coping with. So uh, let's move to the next question, which is sell one of your older tractors for cash. And again, this is one of the classic kinds of transactions. What we're doing here is we're taking one kind of asset, a fixed asset, a tractor, and we're converting it into cash, a current asset. So what you're going to see is this decrease in one kind of asset, that's the tractor, an increase in another kind of asset, that's the cash. And so that's your balance sheet effectively already balances. It just took care of it all in the asset part of it. You didn't you need to see any changes in liabilities or owner equity. Now, what's going on here is generally speaking is changes in the asset part of the balance sheet echo into the investment part of cash flow. So in this case, what's going on is you're seeing more cash enter the firm. And so you're going to see an increase in cash from investments. Again, that's the, the common connection. Investment part of the cash flow statement is the cash that is uh, generated or leaves because of purchase and sale of assets. So let's move along to uh, the next question, and this one will be done in yellow. Hiring new to, uh, two new employees. Now, believe it or not, employees are not assets or anything like that. What the employees are are expenses. Now, they may generate some extra revenue, but we don't have that part in there. So we have this increase in operating expenses that are there. Now, the increase in operating expenses will eventually result into a decrease in net income. Now, here's the connection. The income statement is connected to the cash flow statement through cash from operations. So many times net income goes down, cash from operations goes down over there. And that should be the correct answer to uh, hiring of new uh, employees. So let's go ahead and get to the next question. This one will be in green. Some organic fertilizer shows up with an invoice. So what we've got going on here is actually two things going on at the same time. One, you're purchasing inventory, and the second part of it, you're effectively taking out a small loan that's being funded by the person that you're buying the inventory from. So here's your increase in inventory. So that's the fertilizer that's there. And at the same time, here's the invoice, which is an increase in liability. And please note that those it balanced each other out. Now, what's crucial is it looks like no cash uh, changed hands here, but actually it did. It just kind of flowed in and out real fast so that you didn't notice it. Purchasing the fertilizer means that you had some cash that was flowing out the door, and so that's where those uh, inventory changes would take place. But at the same time, you borrowed money, and you have an increase in cash there. And those, those cancel each other out, and that's why it looks like there was no uh, cash that was uh, changing hands at that point. It's just that there were two separate transactions in there that kind of offset each other. So let's go ahead and grab the uh, next question, which is uh, making a payment on your loan. Now, this one can get complicated, it can also get easy. Um, if you think about just the principal payment part of it, you're going to pay off the loan, which means you're going to be giving up some cash, and at the same time, you're going to be making a, a principal payment that's there. And what happens then is because you're making this payment on a loan, you'll see this decrease in cash from finance over here. And so that's the essential part of it. Now, if you want to get complicated and start having some things like uh, interest, you could also have this uh, operating expense that takes place, which reduces your net income, which reduces your cash from operations, and what you end up having is, is a larger decrease in assets, which means it's going to flow over and have a smaller decrease in owner equity. Uh, so effectively what's going on here is you got a, a 
a more complicated transaction when you're paying these loans, but the essential parts are you're making a payment, you're getting rid of some assets, you're making the liabilities shrink, and your cash from oper uh, finance is decreasing at the same time. Now let's get one which is uh, almost wholly a change in uh, on the balance sheet. An old friend from kindergarten class approaches you with an offer to become your business partner for $50,000 and you accept. So what's going on here is, is that your new partner goes ahead and makes a deposit of $50,000 and that's up on that balance sheet. And at the same time, there's going to be this increase in owner equity that's right there. So please note that that $50,000 increase in assets is offset by a $50,000 increase in owner equity. Now, here's again the connection between a balance sheet and the cash flow statement is, is that that owner equity part is usually connected to finance. So what you're going to see is an increase in cash from finance in that particular place. The finance part has to do with um, not just borrowing, lending, but those changes in owner equity. So there we go, your $50,000 uh, um, investment that's there. Now you raise the prices and as a result your sales decrease slightly. So here's where a sign convention comes in. What we're looking at is a decrease in operating revenue. This decrease in operating revenue results in a decrease in net income, which results in a decrease in cash from operations. So just remember that the connection between the income statement and the cash flow statement is through cash from operations. So that should be seven, and we're on to the last one, which we will do in brown. You expand your pineapple storage facility using cash. Basically what this one is is that there's a, a new investment. So what's going on is that you're going to get rid of some cash and acquire a storage facility, which is a fixed asset. So again, it's, it's, it's pretty similar to the tractor, which is question two, except backwards. Um, so you're going to see a decrease in cash and increase in a fixed asset. And what you have going on here is, is your cash left, which means you're going to have a negative uh, sign on that investment part and that's what happens when you purchase an asset with cash your cash goes down and it shows up in the investment part so there you go there is uh, an explanation of uh, the first uh, essential question question one during the spring of 2012